Hello, welcome to Alan's Garage. Uh, it's like Harry's Garage, but um, rubbish. So <laughs> I foolishly asked on Twitter earlier on if people wanted to see uh, anything about the Mercedes because it hadn't been out of the uh, out of its little garage for a week or so. So uh, it was time to give it a bit of a run. Uh, but I thought I'd start off with the other stuff that's that's on my driveway really and a bit of a, a talk about that because there's some stuff which i haven't talked about that much recently um for reasonable reasons so this is my garage it's it's got a workbench it's got some overalls hanging up uh it's got a lot of wheels and tires uh some bikes and if i walk forwards and hopefully the exposure sorts itself out uh then you can see that there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of yaris bits including um, well, other side, including the entire engine block underneath that piece of, uh, of Mercedes carpeting there. Uh, we'll deal with why there's Mercedes carpeting sitting on an engine block in my drive uh, in a few minutes time. Uh, on the drive, I spinny round because I know where the sun is today. Uh, I've got my mum's Yaris, uh, mum's Yaris hybrid. Ooh, this is harder than it looks. Uh, mum's Yaris hybrid there. Uh, it's, it's great. It's not my iris. Uh, it's great. It's it's here for reasons, uh, and I've been pottering about in it occasionally. It's uh, <sighs> there are lots of B segment cars which are just so much better now. Um, the platform's been around for a long time, but I really quite like driving it. It's uh, conservation of momentum is what you need. Uh, try and try and have that that CVT gearbox using as little as possible, and I absolutely love just trying to be as uh, as economical as possible. It's a it's a different kind of driving really. But moving from the um, not quite sublime to definitely the ridiculous, uh, I've got Johnny the Yaris uh, down here behind me. Um, not talked about Johnny that much. Spent a lot of money on Johnny, but not talked about him that much. Um, so the engine swap's all done. Arms getting cool, tired. Uh, the engine swap's all done. The he goes, he stops because he's done, done the brakes as well. Um, and there's Corolla calipers and discs on the front, so they're grossly oversized for the size of the car, but really an absolute and total rocket ship. Uh, trouble was, whenever we uh, started out, whenever we, we did the original engine conversion, uh, the because his right hand drive the engine has to sit slightly further forward than in some of the pictures you see on the internet of left hand drive ones because of where the uh, because of where the brake master cylinder sits and uh, that meant there wasn't space for the steering pump on the engine uh, we made a decision at the time to say okay let's try it without power steering see how we get on uh, and we can always add in an electric power steering pump later so we did that also forgot it was 20 more kilos over the front axle and that that makes a significant difference uh, whenever it comes to to just the, the steering weight so the steering is way 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 too heavy um, after 40 odd days the steering pump a reconditioned steering uh, a class steering pump finally arrived from poland uh, it's in the car it's waiting to be fitted, but in the meantime, we've also ordered some coilovers, so we've got even more adjustment to sort of undo some of the hybridization of the, the suspension, because uh, again, for technical reasons, it runs Corolla hubs, uh, front discs and front calipers. Uh, means it will just about do an endo when you go to stop really, really hard, um, but it means that there's a little bit, of, uh, little bit of work that needs done just to sort out some of the geometry um, because those Corolla hubs are not exactly the same shape as uh, Mark 1 Yaris hubs. That moves us to the very end of the drive. We'll get there eventually. Very end of the drive. And the Giro main. Um, it's just past its first MOT. It needs a service. It's actually quite overdue a service. Uh, and a supercharger belt as well, uh, which normally has done it two years. I let the service slip by mistake. Normally I drive far more miles than the service interval every year. Obviously 2020 that didn't happen. So uh, so yeah, so it's it's due a service. I'll put that in in the next week or two. And of course I've got a camera and a microphone. So there's every noisy motorbikist in Northamptonshire is on the road. Last but not least, Mercedes. Uh, let's go somewhere that isn't the street outside my house. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> where it's quieter and uh, talk about that.
Anyhow, never mind the other things on my drive. The highlight, of course, is over my shoulder there. The uh, the W124 230E. Um, it's it's found its little place. It, it doesn't live on the drive, so it doesn't live out in the street, uh, as you saw. Um, it actually lives in a, a lock-up, uh, a little while, a little uh, ten-minute walk or so away, and that's great. It just fits. I mean, just fits as in you have to touch the um, you have to touch the back bumper off the back wall uh, to fit it in and to make sure that the door shuts. Um, but as long as you're careful and gentle, then then that's just fine. One of the amazing things about it, because it's it's actually much smaller than you think, is that there is loads of room for you to put it in the middle of the garage, um, sort of narrow cancel garage, and actually open the door and get in and out. Um, the car itself is not much wider uh, than than one of the the newer Yaris, uh, which is which is quite astounding really, because it's always seemed to be such a great big car. But, yeah, there's a few things I want to take and I want to show you because whenever I did the podcast, I couldn't really explain them. Um, and it, it's kind of difficult to, to explain the amount of wear on something uh, whenever, whenever you, you've only got audio uh, to do it with. So let's, let's try and do this, see if this works, and move you over here. So, yeah, what a great looking car, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Um, Bore night. You'll see that I've compared to the um, car and classic videos, which I'll I'll have linked. Uh, I'll try and link somewhere up above. That might be advanced YouTubing. Uh, then you'll notice that we're, we're back to the disc wheels uh, and small season tyres, uh, which are which are fantastic. I think they l really really look the part. I actually think they look better than the uh, than the Sportline alloys, which is crazy because the Sportline alloys were one of the reasons I bought this car in the first place. Uh, that and the that and the colour. It really is a great colour and it changes, well, it changes depending on where on the car you're looking, to be perfectly honest, because it is, it's, it's, it's a car of many colours. Uh, but most of the time that's not really an issue. Not really. The, the bonnet's quite significantly different, everything else has actually come up okay. But given that it's uh, 204,000 miles, I've got that right, it's 204, 206,000 miles, let's have a look. Ah, 206,000 miles. Yeah, you can see that down there. Maybe it'll focus. There we go. Uh, 206,000 miles. But look at that. Look at that steering wheel. No, you can't see it because it's not focused. There we go. Look at that steering wheel. Fantastic condition. Look at these seats. This is the original interior. It's not even a bobble on them. Seatbelt's a little bit on the slow side. But it's it's mint. It's absolutely spotless in there, and the back's just the same. Excuse my mess, by the way. Um, but the back's just the same. It's absolutely immaculate, and everything inside all works. Uh, the central locking works. Um, pretty much everything works. I think the only thing that doesn't really work. Look, working sunroof. Um, <clears throat> as long as it's not too cold. If it's too cold or too damp, then the sunroof doesn't work, but today we're good, so um, I'm, I'm sticking with that. Uh, only thing that doesn't work is the, uh, is the passenger passenger window. Uh, the reason for the, uh, uh, the reason for that, um, for that set of, uh, th that set of trim, trim removers is, the, is to, to actually take that door off, that door card off. Uh, and diagnose that because there's there's lots of noise from the motor but the window doesn't go up and down so I, I don't know whether it's just a gear or if it's something more fundamental with the mechanism uh, so we'll have a, a little bit of a look at that but yeah talking about the interior let's let's go in the back and I'll show you more uh, of what's going on in there oh, my audio is going to be all over the place I keep moving the mic closer and further away please excuse the whole the Blaupunkt isn't working yet. I'm psyching myself up to to removing a capacitor, a rather large capacitor, uh, from the circuit board inside the radio. But um, to be honest, doing this video is one of my my distractions from doing that. Um, but other than that, everything seems to be seems to be functioning. Um, the heater was a bit on the slow side uh, when it was really really cold, but I think that that's just because it was really really cold. 
uh, and I have a suspicion that whenever um, whenever Chris fitted the new radiator the problem actually is the new radiator radiator is too good uh, and it's cooling the coolant too much when it's too cold honestly how often is it minus seven <laughs> not very I think I'll cope with it look at that it's telling me to tell me to put my seatbelt on never mind um but what else yeah it's just just cracking there's a there's uh, I've had it polished doesn't that sound brilliant by the way um had it polished which has brought it up it of course has rained since then and then as i've been trying to find somewhere quiet enough to film the uh then uh then then it's got splashed because the roads are wet and there's cyclists and there's people and and all sorts but it, it's got it's relatively glossy now on both sides it mostly matches up I don't feel a mad urge to repaint it. It would be nice if the bonnet matched, but the trouble is each wing is a different colour, so the bonnet would have to have them sort of fade across it. And there's a little bit of crustiness on the front, but it's really not bad. The bit that I d do worry about... Are you motion sick yet? I would be. The bit that I do worry about is this bit up here. Um, because that's awkward that that's probably going to mean the back window has to come out but as it is it's pushing stuff away it's it's probably hitting that seal and one of the reasons it gets a little bit damp I mean the boot is is something of a cheese factory um, but the and that started since I took ownership by the way uh, that's that's my fault um, I think I disturbed a seal um, and, and it's getting its own back. But no, I'd, I'd like to do something about this. But look at that, it's, there's one crease, another crease, it goes down, there's the lip for the back window. There's another crease bringing it around here. It's a really complicated little bit. And to do it, the back window is gonna have to come out. When they do that, they don't guarantee that they can take the window out in one piece. <laughs> so can you see why I'm a little bit, a little bit nervous about that? Uh, as an idea but it's it's the worst bit on the whole car um the rest of this car is so sound it's so good look excuse the dirt it's great otherwise um there is a slightly classy uh piece of duct tape uh, over where the aerial goes um uh, again that was me I, I jiggled the aerial around quite a bit and it seemed to be, and I, I thought it was a source of water ingress into the boot. I think actually it was the, the seal around the outside was the problem. Uh, so I took out the aerial uh, and put that over just to check. Turned out really good timing because I did that an hour before all the snow started that fell for weeks. Well, it felt like weeks. Um, but yeah, just at the start of all the snow. Um, but look at this thing. Just, just, I, I sound like... I sound like Major Gav, I'm so sorry. I sound like Maj Major Gav and film like Ian Seabrook. But, uh, yeah, it's just such a beautiful car. There's little bits, I mean, look, there's some, there's some primer down there. But, you know what, once there's a little bit of dirt, you don't notice it. Stuff like the arches, and the reason it looks like it's sitting so low is, um, the reason it looks like it's sitting so low is because it's sitting on a funny angle. Um, previous place was much more level um, but you know some of the arches they're not crusty at the back again they're not crusty it's all it's all good it's, it's a little bit down there you know but we're not gonna win any concourse and despite the polish well yeah again it's a car that spent some of its life sitting in a yard um, sitting in the yard, uh, r rusting for a little while through the, this wing, and uh, yeah, who, who, who cares? Frankly, it's close enough. Again, no, no crustiness and no crustiness at the back here either. You couldn't really ask for any better. You really couldn't ask for any better. You can see it's a bit, a bit crummy around the door handle there, but it's so serviceable. It's an absolute delight to drive. Oh yeah, this is the other bit. Yeah. The thing is, I looked at getting a replacement door. 
doesn't matter they're all the same it's the same with the bonnet that leading edge of the bonnet they're all the same it's a 30 year old car it's what happens on a 30 year old car and the thing is it's it's just so usable this is a car that is fantastically usable you hop in it it starts it drives i mean look at the, the profile on that tire it's great for modern roads modern rubbish roads this car is is spot on it doesn't creak it doesn't groan it doesn't really clonk it's the occasional thing I'll, I'll take it to be cool and get them to have a look at it but it just goes does what you want it to do and it just works i really do like it it's quite nice just standing here looking at it and my friends wants me to fit bronze alloy wheels and um and make and get the uh, the grill surround powder coated or painted gloss black and it would look kind of cool but i don't want it <laughs> i don't want to do that it's not what it's about i seem to be more about restoring it to standard than, than stripping things off rear subframes the one bit that that uh that, that wasn't looked at before again um, at some point I'll get Beekill to stick it on a ramp have a poke at it and just see uh, we'll make up a little list of, of what's of nice to haves and must haves and, and all the other usual good old requirementy stuff Mos <laughs> have, a look, have a look at what we want and Moscow it but it's such a great looking car I really do I really do like it I really do love driving it it's some of the details. It took me an age to work this out. How do you how do you put the um, oh, let me get in here? Uh, how do you put the headrest up and down? You pull that out, turn it. Oh, oh, you can't see anything. You pull that out and you turn it, and the headrest goes up and down. If I turn it the correct way, it'll do the correct thing. There we go, there's it going, there it's going down there. I don't really want it down. So I've got a long back. It took me a while, but it's brilliant. And that was all engineered in the late 70s, early 1980s. There's a couple of bits, you can see some of the vinyls off there. Some of the headliners a bit loose. But honestly, if I'm getting that back corner done, I'll take the headliner out and re-glue it myself. Working sunroof mech. I'm gonna to have to demonstrate the sunroof mechanism, haven't I? Let's go around and get back in. Right, let's turn this on a bit. Please work, this is gonna be so embarrassing if it doesn't. And with the button. I can never get this to go the right way the right the first time. Here we go, it's coming forward. It stops. You have to change which way you shift the button. There we go, up, and then to get it back, you have to push it back and just hope that that's right. How does that look? That's pretty good. I can live with that. But even with the sunroof shut, look how bright it is in here. Look at that. You're not going to get, not, not much noise gets to the inside of this. Not at all. Well, let's start it. Which of course it didn't do first time because it was already most of the way started. Let's try again. There we go. The engine's running. I don't know if you can hear that. There are times when I can't. <laughs> uh, oh, there's the headliner. Head don't mind. It doesn't touch my head. I don't notice. Um, it is so smooth. When I got this, I was. It was one of those things where you think, oh, well, it would be so much nicer if it was a straight six, if it was a, a three twenty. Um, but. Do you know what? It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. Uh, it just it, it just runs and it's quiet and it's lovely. Um, well, I say it's quiet. If I turn the fan on, oh yeah, that's going to set your dogs off. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can probably hear that now. Squeaky, squeaky, squeak. Never mind. I'll disassemble the dash one day and pull that bit out. I've already changed bulbs and stuff to, to just make all of that everything light up as it should do. It's fantastic amber, amber colour. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. it. It's not really a car to go out and do a 
to rev the engine and let you hear the exhaust note because there really isn't much exhaust note. I mean, it's perfectly good. There's no catalytic converters. There's nothing between engine and the back other than a long pipe and a couple of back boxes. And that was all replaced with uh, with standard parts. So that's it, really. I think that's all I've got to tell. I want to get this ra this radio sorted because that annoys me. I don't really like having a hole in the middle of the dashboard. But uh, but otherwise, that's about it. I think. Anyway, from the second time of recording this, um, thanks, cheers, and uh, yeah, I'll hopefully be back before long. But in the meantime, safe motoring. <laughs>